So hello everyone, we're gathering once again for the fourth Sunday of Lent. We're in that midpoint of Lent. Uh, we wear uh, the rose vestments. It's just a sign of hope and a sign of joy that, uh, that Lent is leading us to, to the light. Maybe that's one way of putting it. This is also, uh, and you'll hear it in a little bit of the reading, but also in the intercessions, uh, this fourth Sunday, for the catechumens, for those who are uh, going to be baptized at Easter, uh, we have a special prayer over them in the church at the 11 o'clock mass. And the prayer is connected to a story uh, in the Gospel of John, a, a man who was born blind. So a lot of the imagery has to do with the, the eyes of faith to be able to see the light. So you'll hear it here and there, but that's where that's coming from today. So we want to remember them. It's a big step they're, they're taking, so we really want to pray for them. So we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, our Father, your word, Jesus Christ, spoke peace to a sinful world and brought us the gift of reconciliation by the suffering and death he endured. Teach us, the people who bear his name, to follow the example he gave us. May our faith, hope, and love turn hatred to love, conflict to peace, and death to eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to read the second reading of the day. It's from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he has for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, raised up with him, and seated with him in the heavens. By the grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift from God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. We are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. So this little passage is really just reminding us of God's love, right? The immeasurable riches of his grace, the way he puts it. Uh, it's very important that um, before we uh, think of the gospel reading or read the gospel reading, we focus on this love of God. That's the theme for today. Uh, God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son. So that's the, that's the theme running behind everything we do today. So here's the gospel reading. It's from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but who, whoever does not, uh, but the world, but that the world might be saved through him, sorry. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world. But people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The Gospel of the Lord. So this Nicodemus is a, 
interesting and important figure in the Gospel of John. He's mentioned a few times. So let's look at him a little bit just before we get into what Jesus is uh, telling him, teaching him. So Nicodemus was a clandestine uh, disciple of Jesus. Uh, he was a Pharisee, and, uh, and God, John says in the Gospel that he was a ruler of the people. That means he was a member of the Sanhedrin. That was a group of 70 men uh, who were really the ultimate uh, law uh, in Judaism at the time. Uh, they're the group that eventually condemns Jesus, that they have him brought to Pilate. Um, at one of the sessions where they're discussing Jesus, what to do with him, uh, Nicodemus stands up and says, it's not our custom to judge someone uh, until we've spoken with him. You know, so he tries to stop them from moving ahead, but eventually they, they do move ahead. But he's, he's clandestine about his relationship with Jesus. He knows him, he knows of him, uh, he knows some of his teachings, but he has lots of questions. Uh, so uh, he visits Jesus at night, and our gospel passage today is uh, a little bit of the conversation that they have. I guess when we look at what Jesus is teaching Nicodemus, he's going into uh, Nicodemus' uh, uh, knowledge of the scripture, and he's making reference uh, to an event that took place while the Jewish people were on their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. At one point, uh, they just get disgusted with everything. They're tired of wandering, they're tired of the lack of food. So this is what they say to Moses. Why have you brought us up from the land of Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. Right? The wretched food they're talking about is the manna that God sent them every morning to feed them. The people forgot at that point. Right? They forgot that God freed them from the slavery of Egypt. They forgot that God was protecting them along the way from other tribes that were uh, attacking them. And they forgot that God was feeding them daily uh, with bread from heaven. That forgetfulness uh, brought up in the story of, of the Exodus, God's anger against them. So God sends uh, seraph uh, serpents into the camp. They start biting the people. Um, many people are dying. Uh, and they all come to Moses pleading, uh, have God take this away from us. So Moses does plead, and God tells him to make a, a serpent out of bronze and put it on a pole. And everyone who looks at this bronze serpent will be healed. So basically what God is doing is telling them, look at your sin, right? The, the serpent is a symbol of their sin. Look at your sin, acknowledge it and you'll be able to move on. Right? So that image, uh, Nicodemus begins to connect, uh, or uh, Jesus begins to connect with himself. Right? So he takes something that Nicodemus knows about, and he begins to give it a new meaning, a new direction. So by connecting this image to his own crucifixion, Jesus was teaching that his death would be redemptive looking at him crucified, opening our hearts to him and believing in him is the source of eternal life. Jesus went a, f a step f uh, deeper into the teaching. In the desert, the people despaired because they had forgotten how much God loved them, continued to explain the meaning of the crucifixion. Jesus said this to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. So Nicodemus, the ultra-Orthodox Pharisee, who thought he would win God's love by following every precept of the law, was confronted by the reality of God's love God wasn't waiting for an opportunity to punish him. 
As he says in the gospel, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God, the eternal one, doesn't want to condemn anyone. God wants us to share his life, right? Eternal life, the life of the eternal one. I'm going to leave you with an image now. During the high mass, when I incense the altar, you'll always notice as I go around the altar, I stop in the center and I incense. And what I'm incensing is the cross that's behind me. And I wanna leave you with that image, right? We always look at it at mass. It's Jesus mounted right on a golden pole. As the smoke rises, maybe remember when you do get back to mass and you do come to the high mass, every time the priest stops in the center of the altar to incense, he's getting us to notice the cross, right? The Jewish people looked at the bronze serpent and were healed. We look at the crucified Christ and we're healed. So just remember those words. When you see the priest stop, remember the words of Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but might have eternal life. And we'll gather our prayers now. The Lord opens our eyes so that we can see him clearly. So we ask that our vision help discern the needs of the world so that we can bring them in prayer before God. So let's pray first of all today for the church that each and every one of us may shine the light of the Lord upon every corner of the world, making visible the Lord's truth and righteousness to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for people around the world who live in the darkness of war, injustice, and poverty, that they might find hope in a risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have chosen to look away from those who suffer, that they may come to find the joy of living in the light of Christ, which overcomes the darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those preparing for the Easter sacraments, especially our own catechumens here at St. Jean's. May they take the heart, take to heart St. Paul's counsel and live as children of the light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for each of us, that we might always treasure the light of Christ that we received in baptism, the light that produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pause. Let's call to mind our intentions for today. God of light, you gave light to the world on that first day. Your Son gives light to each one of us to guide us to you. Help us to shine that light on others as to listen to our needs and grant them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For well, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For well, through your goodness we have this wine to offer. 
fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. So we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands, the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all the church. So Lord, by the grace of the sacrifice, may we who ask forgiveness be ready to forgive one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. He came among us as a man to lead us from darkness into the light of faith. Through Adam's fall, we were born as slaves of sin, but now through baptism in Christ, we are reborn as your adopted children. Earth unites with heaven to sing the new song of creation as we adore and praise you forever. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the font of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and the Apostles and all the saints, we may merit eternal life. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, you enlighten all who come into the world. Fill our hearts with the light of your gospel, that our thoughts may please you and our love be sincere. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow down our heads and pray for God's blessing. Father, look with love on your people, the love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed us when he delivered himself to evil men and suffered the agony of the cross. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For the Mass is ended now. May we all go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. So hope to see you next week. Have a good week. Have a relaxing week. And uh, continue the Lenten journey. Have a good day.